Hey everyone, Diavolo here, and in today's video we are going to be going over more of the absolutely wonderful and excruciatingly beautiful world of the one and only Demon Slayer. Going through the story so far has been honestly something that constantly keeps my eyes peeled to the page for hours and hours at a time without me even realizing literally how much time has passed. Over my past to explain videos, I've gone over probably two of the most hype and utterly insane arcs of the Kimetsu no Yaiba story. That being the Entertainment District arc and the Swordsmith Village arc. So just before we continue on with the story, if you want to be up to date with everything that has happened so far, then do be sure to check out those videos which I will leave a link to down in the description below. Also, I just want to cut myself off here again, I think this cements my spot as an official YouTuber now, as the big dogs themselves, the god of sponsorships, Raid Shadow Legions has officially come in and saved our day by sponsoring this video. You may not know this, but Raid has actually got a ton of champions, and if you love world building as much as myself, then be sure to go and check out Raid's world, and how each character comes from its own unique faction with an added level of immersion, as they've also added an in-depth history inside of its own unique world called Teleria. Check out my links below to download Raid yourself on PC or mobile. But if you're still somehow not convinced, the newest boss just released in Raid and it's one of the biggest and craziest yet. This thing is literally a Hydra with a total of 6 different heads. Each one of these heads itself is a complete boss battle all on its own. For example, the one I've found the most painful so far is the Head of Decay. Like this thing has attacks, but the main reason it is hard is the anti-heal component to this boss, as I constantly love having full health in like every game I play, but every time you heal or try to heal one of your champions while fighting against the Head of Decay, it does the complete opposite and actually makes you lose max HP, which is just painful in my opinion. Or the Head of Suffering, like once again in the name, you will suffer. It's got this new effect called Pain Link, which literally lets the head share the damage it takes with you. If you're not careful, you will end up dying insanely quickly, so I'd personally recommend you bring along someone who can end up tanking the Pain Link debuff to get around this effect. And if the craziest Hydra boss in the entirety of mobile games is enough for you, there's more. Raid is also giving away a super limited edition champion to every single player. It's the esports legend Navi Superstar Simple. Between now and January 28th, 2022, Simple's limited edition champ is available for free to both new and old players in Raid. All you have to do is log in for 7 days between now and January 28th and he's yours. If you miss that date though, then you miss out. Forever. So just to make an account and claim him through my link. On top of that, there's a ton of New Year's events and tournaments including a special fusion event where you can get one of Raid's newest legendary champions. And if you use my link in the description or scan the QR code that is currently on screen, you'll get a free starter pack with almost 30 USD to kickstart your game. We're talking a free champion Tariel, 200,000 in silver, 1 energy refill, 1 XP boost and 1 ancient shard so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in the game. All the treasure will be waiting for you in the chest icon so make sure you click that right here. Once you're in the game you can find me under the name DiavoloYT and it's literally that easy so just click the link in the description below and you'll see the game. But anyway, continuing on with this story, we finally come to a special training session that aims to improve all Demon Slayer's abilities and health. This here is the one and only Hashira training arc of Demon Slayer. But just before we dive headfirst into this arc, which leaves us on the largest cliffhanger of the entire series so far, if you are new around here and want more explained videos just like this one, then do be sure to hit that subscribe button and also be sure to leave a like on the video, as it really helps out with the algorithm and pushes my stuff to a bunch of new amazing people. But anyway, enough of that, let's get into the Hashira training arc. So after Nezuko's sudden change and the end of the battle between the two demons, we find that there have been plans to move the Swordsmith Village due to the battle. These plans were set into action right away, as come nightfall, the demons would undoubtedly attack once again. We also find out that even though two upper ranked demons had attacked the village, its damages in general had been kept to a minimum because of the work that the Slayers had put in. Back at the hideout, Tanjiro chats with Goto, the Kakushi at the Butterfly Mansion. After waking up from resting for 7 days straight after the fight, Goto tells Tanjiro that their swordsmiths have several empty villages that have been prepared in case of emergencies like this. After chatting some more, Goto says that he wanted to especially ask Tanjiro something. 
which was that he had heard something incredible happen to Nezuko. Nonchalantly, Tanjiro replies that she is now walking around in the sun, commenting on the complete absurdity of the situation while he continues to stuff his face. Then without thinking, Tanjiro slips up and tells Goto that Tamiyo is looking into why and how Nezuko has conquered the sun. Because Goto doesn't know who Tamiyo is, he questions him on this, causing Tanjiro to choke on his food, distracting Goto from the topic. As Goto jokes about how everything will be peaceful until Zenitsu shows up, it suddenly cuts to the yellow-haired maniac arriving at the Butterfly Mansion. After a mission and finding out that Nezuko can now walk in the sun and speak, Zenitsu screams out loud and says that he's having a heart attack and grabbing Nezuko before screaming more about how cute and absolutely amazingly wonderful and marvellous it is that Nezuko was able to be out in the sun. He screams at her to please marry him, then she utters the words, Welcome back, Inosuke. Zenitsu's mood immediately changes as he says that he is going to burn Inosuke alive. It then quickly explains that Inosuke had visited the Butterfly Mansion a few days ago and made it his mission to make sure that Nezuko could say his name. Later that same day, an emergency pillar meeting was held at the Ubi Yashiki Estate. Sinimi, Iguro, Muchiro, Mitsuri, Gyome, Shinobu, and Giyu are all present. After the Hashira greet each other, a main Ubiyashiki, Kagaya's wife, makes her appearance in place of her husband, as his illness has left him completely bedridden and unable to move. The stone Hashira, Gyome, immediately bows to the ground after he hears this information and says that he prays from the bottom of his heart for his master's life to continue to burn, even if it was for only one more day. Once the meeting begins, Amain brings up the information about a certain demon who has managed to conquer the sun, obviously referring to the stunning Nezuko. She says that because of this, they will soon find themselves in a full-scale war. After a while, she brings up the strange marks that appeared on Mitsuri and Muchiro that day, and Amain explains what they are. These are marks that many of the first swordsmen who were only one step away from beating Muzan had. They had all manifested marks similar to demonic patterns. This information had been hidden due to the fact that many people brooded over not actually having the marks. Over time, the information had become unclear, but one thing that was passed on indefinitely was that whoever had the mark would start spreading it to others who fit the qualifications. Amain then says that the first person to manifest the mark did not have the rank of a sharer. Instead, the first person to gain this mark in generations was no one other than Tanjiro. Though, when they asked him how he felt when he had got the mark, he had absolutely no idea, so they decided to not pursue him for it. But now, that two more people have gained the mark, Main asks them to teach the rest of them how it was done. Sadly, Kenroji had a hard time putting it into words and only embarrasses herself when all she can do is come up with vague descriptions that are mostly made up of noises about how it felt. But Muchiro does have some kind of idea about what could possibly cause the mark to appear on anyone. Muchiro explains that during his fight he got poisoned, so he used breathing to slow his blood circulation. Then a boy who tried to help him almost got killed and he began to remember his past memories. He became so consumed by his anger that he lost complete control of his emotions. He says that he thinks his heart rate exceeded 200 beats per minute and his body temperature went over 39 degrees celsius. Muchiro continues saying that those who do not have the mark appear, even though they do have the qualifications, do not get the mark because they will die. But those whose bodies can withstand the extreme circumstances will have a mark appear and enhance their ability to fight. Confused about the specificities, Amain asks what made him think that his temperature was 39 degrees, in which Muturi says that when he was 9, Shinobu was treating his wounds. He was reported to have a fever at 39 degrees, and he says that he felt the exact same way when the mark appeared. After everyone reacts to how they will try to gain the mark, Amain says that there is one thing she must tell everyone regarding manifesting the mark. She states, for those who have already manifested the mark, it is too late. Those who do not manifest the mark, without any exception, will all. Amain then leaves. As the pillars are about to have a discussion about training, Tomioka stands up and claims that there is no need or reason that he has to stay any longer. This then leaves the other pillars confused as to why he doesn't think he needs to be there, but his only explanation is that he is different from them. Completely aggravated by this, Shinizugawa says that he does not buy that and asks Tomioka if he looks down on the other Hashiras. 
Tomioka doesn't explain himself or what he means, which causes Zanimi to strike at him. But as this happens, the stone pillar and complete beast Gyome says that they should all sit down and continue talking as he has a proposal. It then cuts to Haganezuka, who has arrived at the Butterfly Mansion to deliver Tanjiro his reforged sword. While he struggles for air, sweat pours off the mask of the swordsman. Suddenly, Haganezuka whips out Tanjiro's new sword, which has Rengoku's hilt firmly attached, then gives it to him, and at the request of Goto, he sits down before urging Tanjiro to unsheath the blade. Tanjiro is left in complete awe by the beauty of the blade and Haganezuka says that it is made from high quality steel and must have been used previously by a very strong swordsman. The blade has the character for slay, pronounced Metsu, which can also mean destruction in the Japanese language. Haganezuka also explains that this blade was probably made before the demon hierarchy was ever established, and this was why many of the Hashira have the kanji pronounced Aki Misatsu engraved on their blades, which means destroy all evil demons in the Japanese language. Tanjiro then says that he did not remember seeing those words on these swords when he had used it. Quickly, Haganezuka is set into an angry monologue on how Tanjiro has put irremovable damage on the blade because he had used it while it was still in the early stages of sharpening the blade. He then leaves after Tanjiro promises him to bring him dumplings until the day he dies. Overhearing the commotion, an annoyed Genya then complains about how noisy Tanjiro and his guests were. Tanjiro apologizes and goes on to say that he is done, but he doesn't get to finish because Inosuke enters the room by breaking through the window completely destroying it in the process. The shirtless boar boy then relentlessly begins screaming out loud that it is here. Group strength training starts now. As a large group of demon slayers are seen heavily sweating, they run down and through a mountain pass. It is explained through Zenitsu that the special training known as Hashira training had begun. This training was to ensure that those who are ranked lower than the Hashira get to actually train with each individual pillar in a different order to strengthen the demon slayers. This is actually a special exercise because generally, Hashira would only train with their successors, but since Nezuko's sudden change, the demon's appearances have completely stopped, leaving Hashira to do their security details by night and focus on training the demon slayers during the day. After hearing all this information, Tanjiro happily remarks that it is amazing, but Zenitsu instantly cuts him off and tells him that it is not amazing at all and instead it is awful, it is complete hell. Tanjiro retorts though, saying that sparring with someone who is stronger than you is the best way to quickly improve and that when you face them you can absorb wisdom through the fight to also get stronger yourself. Hearing this, Zenitsu strikes out and bites down on Tanjiro's head, screaming at him and telling him that they are no longer friends as of right now, then goes to leave. Tanjiro tries to stop him and eventually Zenitsu turns around to hear Tanjiro tell him that during his fight with the upper rank, he had used a trick that he had taught him for thunder breathing. He tries to use this to get Zenitsu to realize that this is how connections with other people help you get through tight spots, so everything he learns during this Hashira training will eventually pay off for him in the future. Again, instantly Zenitsu's mood completely shifts from upset to an overjoyed moron who tries telling Chanjiro that this doesn't change his mood at all. While he sprints out of the room, a random crow comes flying into the room through a window and hits Tanjiro directly in the forehead. He then gives Tanjiro a letter. As it skips away from the mysterious letter, we find ourselves with the flashiest lord, our retired god, the big man Tengen Uzui. Tengen screams at the younger slayers who are training under him for being late and says that they are barely even able to run, screaming at them to stop licking the ground while he smashes down on them with his bokuto. It then reveals to us the positioning each Hashira has taken in training the younger slayers. With Tengen and his grueling basic fitness workouts being the first trial, followed by lessons by Mitsuri in flexibility and Tokito in high speed movement. Then comes swordsmanship with the serpent Hashira and lessons in making infinite strikes with the wind. Finally, finishing with the ultimate strength training session with the stone Hashira, Gyome. With this constant sparring going on for hours at end, it should further improve the Hashira's overall strength and if this somehow grants the right conditions for manifesting a mark, that would also be perfectly ideal. As for people who have already manifested the mark, they just need to maintain their condition. Hopefully, with all that has been learned among every member, it will also raise the overall strength of the actual core itself in preparation for the up and coming battle. As it flashes away from the explanation, we find Tomioka sitting alone. 
Suddenly, Tanjiro shows up and without any hesitation, makes his entrance into Giyu's house, leaving Tomioka completely stunned at the random scenario. After Tanjiro explains the training session to the water Hashira, he tells him that in 7 days he will be able to return to active duty and would like for Tomioka to train him, in which he denies. Tomioka explains that he is not angry, but more that he was supposed to become the new water Hashira. Tanjiro apologizes, saying that he spoke to Urokodaki about breathing styles and how it isn't unusual that sometimes you can change your breathing style and give birth to a new one. He states that the water breathing techniques especially are close to the basics so they help give rise to many new styles. But Giyu tells Tanjiro to not say that because there is currently no water Hashira so someone must fill that role as soon as possible. Confused, Tanjiro asks him about this, to which he is told that Giyu Tomioka is not the water Hashira. As Tanjiro sits there stunned, he thinks back to the letter he received earlier. This letter was from Kagaya Yubishiki, and he specifically had asked Tanjiro to go and talk to Giyu, as he doesn't think he can do so in his current state. Kagaya tells him that this is an incredibly important time where everyone must come together, but Giyu goes at things alone. As he remembers the master's words, he reiterates the thought that he will be persistent and continuously talk to Giyu. He constantly hung around him and talked non-stop, to the point that Giyu was left completely complexed, wondering if this would go on for the rest of his life. After a painful four days, Giyu eventually gave in and revealed that he hadn't passed the final selection exam. Giyu explained that a boy like him, named Sabito, had taken the final selection at the same time as him. Sabito had killed all of the demons almost completely alone and yet somehow ended up failing, where in a complete contrast, Giyu had been injured by the first demon and fallen into a daze. The next thing he knew was that the exam was over and that he had somehow survived. Giyu tells Tanjiro that he thinks he isn't worthy of becoming a Hashira because of this. He doesn't even feel like he should stand near his other pillars as he feels like he doesn't really deserve a place in the Demon Slayer core. As he begins to walk away from Tanjiro, he states that he will not manifest the mark, although Sabito may have, so don't bother him anymore as it is a complete waste of time. Tanjiro thinks to himself about Giyu's feelings and how he bet that he wishes that he had died in Sabito's place. He realizes he understands that feeling so well that it hurts. Noting that when someone is so important to you that you wish you could die in their place, it feels like you are being ripped apart from the inside. He begins to remember about Sabito and Makomo, who had trained him even though they were supposedly dead. As he compares himself to Sabito, Tanjiro admires him for being able to protect and save everyone else at the final selection, while Tanjiro himself could not, and he remarks that Sabito would have become a formidable swordsman had he survived, which is obviously another reason that made Giyu feel like he'd be better off dead instead. Tanjiro understanding his emotions remembers Kiyojuro who had also lost his life to protect him. In his mind, Tanjiro too believes that the Flame Hashira could have become someone capable enough to defeat Muzan and that he wishes he could have died in his place. Pondering on what to tell Giyu, he eventually decides to ask Giyu a question regarding whether or not he wants to exploit what Sabuto entrusted to him, which leaves the supposed Water Hashira completely stunned by Tanjiro's question. The important memories of his past suddenly begin to come flooding back into Giyu's mind. The supposed Water Hashira recalls his past with Sabito, slapping him and telling him to never say that he'd wished he'd died. Sabito went on and insisted that Giyu had to live to protect others so not to disrespect his sister who had lost her life from protecting him from a demon. Back in the present, in his mind, Giyu apologizes to both Sibito and his sister for being so immature and forgetting this basic morale. As Tanjiro stands there observing a silent Giyu, he believes he could have made a mistake for asking the question and comes up with the idea of having an eating contest which may solve the issue. After finally deciding to train with Tanjiro, Giyu turns around and before his words could reach him, Tanjiro suggests that the two have an eating contest and much to his initial confusion, the water Hashira ends up accepting. Elsewhere, the insect Hashira, Shinobu, can be seen running through the corridors of the Butterfly Mansion. As she sits down in front of an altar, she tells herself to calm down as only the immature can't handle their emotions, leaving her pondering the idea that she's probably immature. As she slumps saddened at the overall situation, Aoi welcomes her back to her room announcing herself at the same time, before asking her if it was possible to train with a stone Hashira. 
Shinobu tells her that she can't help it with training this time to the confusion of Aoi. When she is told to come closer, she tells Shinobu that she would like to train with her some more, which brings up the overall mood of Shinobu, who tells Kanua that she has gotten much better at speaking her mind. Still confused, Aoi asks if this wasn't the right time, but to her visible surprise, Shinobu retorts, telling her that it is now time to talk about how to kill the demon who killed her sister, Kane. Far away, a crow calls as it flies through the night and makes its entrance into the top room of Tamiyo's household, warning her that it is dangerous to leave her windows open at night. The crow then introduces himself as Kagaya Yubishiki's messenger and tells Tamiyo that she was extremely good at hiding herself. So good in fact that the crow's master had lost the ability to completely move during the time it had taken to find her. After some more conferring between the two, the crow begins telling Tamiyo about their plan, which is that they would like for her to come to the Ubiyashiki mansion to help study Nezuko and finally help defeat the one and only Muzan Kibutsuji. As Tamiyo's heart races, her thoughts also race through her head as she ponders how even though she's a demon, they have asked for her to come to the main hideout to help. Having recovered from his battle against Tantengu, Tanjiro joined the joint training effort. He is greeted by Tengen and his wives, whose training he completes in just 10 days. He then travels to Muchiro's residence, who complimented him on having even faster swordsplay, and who also sought to increase his stamina via helping his muscles ease and tense up more smoothly. Having accomplished this, Muchiro cheerfully allowed Tanjiro to move on to the next Hashira training, despite its only having been 5 days. The next Hashira to train Tanjiro was Mitsuri, who exchanged some pleasantries with the youth before they got down to the task at hand. And they love Hashira's training, the men dress up in a manner reminiscent of ballerinas and dance constantly. At the same time, she helps them improve their flexibility with her own strength. This led to the next place of Tanjiro's training, with the serpent Hashira Obanai. After an unpleasant greeting from his superior, Tanjiro was thrust into his variation of the ordeal, with the room being covered in bound swordsmen on the floor and walls, expected to deliver blows to Obanai while avoiding striking these unfortunate souls. During the training between the two, Tanjiro was struck by his teacher, whose blows he were able to weave like a snake between the tied up individuals. Despite these hardships, which included being able to hear the terrified victims beg not to be hit, Tanjiro eventually began to counter and avoid Obanai's strikes after four days of hard work. After striking off the Hayori the Hashira was wearing, he was permitted to go onto the next section of the training, with the Wind Hashira Sanemi Shinazugawa. On his way there, he encounters a visibly terrified Zenitsu, who had fled from the intense and brutal tutelage. However, as he screams for Tanjiro to help him escape, Sanemi catches up with him, grabbing his head and threatening him to return him to the facility before ultimately knocking him out. Sanemi then forces Tanjiro to carry his unconscious friend. While running behind the Hashira, the two exchange harsh words with each other, affirming their hatred that they have towards each other. After the training ended, it was revealed that Shinizugawa's training was so gruelling that he understood why Zenitsu had become so rabid. He goes on to say that it was just a simple striking exercise where he would attack Sanemi. Each session continued without rest until he ended up vomiting blood and eventually passing out. Once he awoke, Zenitsu cursed him, and Tanjiro realized that Shinazugawa was overly tough on Tanjiro, to the point that if he lost concentration for a moment, he would have gotten seriously injured. Still incredibly beat up from all of this training, while walking back to his room, Tanjiro then witnessed Sanemi and his little brother. It was obvious Genya was trying his hardest to talk with his brother, but despite this, Genya gets threatened by the Hashira, who insisted that he had no brother, and if he didn't knock this off, then he would kill him, leaving Genya standing there saddened and completely speechless. As Tanjiro listens in on the tension-filled confrontation between the Shinazugawa brothers, Sanemi straightforwardly disowns Genya as his brother. Distraught by this denial and his brother's lack of empathy, Genya further tries to apologize for his wrongdoing, while being secretly encouraged by Tanjiro who was eavesdropping, and reveals his desperation to where he acquired the ability to fight by eating demons. Sanemi stops in his tracks and peers back menacingly at Genya, questioning his words about eating demons. He vanishes within the moment, causing Tanjiro to make a break towards Genya to tackle him to the ground, safely protecting him from having his eyes gouged out by Sanemi. The two boys crash through the sliding door into the outside garden, scaring Zenitsu along with the other demon slayers. 
Tanjiro questioned Sanemi for trying to kill his brother, but the latter corrected him, stating that he will only beat Genya until he has no longer the ability to regenerate, resulting in his retirement from the Demon Slayers. In disbelief, Tanjiro defended Genya, stating that he was instrumental in defeating the upper rank during their last encounter, and declared that he will protect him from his brother who disowned him. Sanemi then turned to attack Tanjiro, but Tanjiro was able to block his punch and counterattack. Once the brawl between Tanjiro and Sanemi started, Tanjiro quickly requests to Zenitsu to take Genya away with him, doing so straight away. But as Zenitsu takes Genya away, he insults his brother, which results in Genya smacking Zenitsu over the head. Everything turned into a mess from that point onwards, and the chaos continued all the way until the late evening. Tanjiro got an official scolding from the higher-ups, and his training with the Wind Hashira not only came to a halt, but he was also banned from ever approaching him. In the end, Tanjiro was unable to help mediate and repair the Shinazugawa's brother's relationship. As the bruised Tanjiro and Zenitsu make their way to the Stone Hashira's training ground, they find Inosuke and the other Demon Slayers training under a waterfall and are greeted by the Stone Hashira, who was close by meditating in a hellish way. This ended up resulting with Zenitsu screaming out as he sees that the Hashira was standing barefoot in a pit of fire. Gyome begins explaining the importance of his training, as stabilizing one's body with strong limbs will lead to accurate attacks and an industrious defense. His training module included three simple things. First, training by having the waterfall beat down on you. Second, carry three logs on your shoulders. And finally, push a massive boulder over one cho, which if in a normal measurement would usually be around 0.1 meters, as one square meter is approximately 100.83 cho. Despite the training seeming easy, it was actually horrendous and constantly Zenitsu kept on complaining about the freezing waterfall. Even Onosuke who was working hard ended up drowning. After reviving his friend, Tanjiro also trained under the waterfall and realized that the chants taught by Gyome were for focusing and informing the others that he is still conscious. While eating grilled fish together with the other Demon Slayers, Inosuke asserted that the Rock Hashira is the strongest in their organization. Tanjiro supported this as he also noticed that Gyome is the only one with a different scent of smell. Zenitsu on the other hand was still in disbelief that Gyome was able to move the boulder easily, but was dumbfounded when he saw the Hashira pushing an even bigger rock. Eventually Tanjiro and his friends were able to complete the waterfall and log carrying training, but they were still unable to push the boulder in any kind of way. Gyomo's training was hard, but it wasn't completely compulsory. If you wanted to quit, you could always go down the mountain and give up. Six more days passed and Tanjiro was still unable to move his boulder, and despite all his training, the mark still didn't show up. While Tanjiro was contemplating about the current situation, Genya suddenly appeared and asked about Tanjiro's scar, noting that it is getting bigger. He then told Tanjiro what happened to him after the scuffle with his brother. He got himself scolded by Gyome, and he was told to never go near Sanemi again. Apparently, Genya was also on the rock training, and compared to Tanjiro, he was able to move his boulder, which led him to question the latter if he knew about repeating actions. He then explained that Gyome sucks at teaching, so one must watch him closely in order to not fail at passing his training. Genya goes on to explain that Gyome was actually doing a predetermined set of movements in order to maximize his concentration. Gyome can be seen eavesdropping while the two continue talking about repeating actions. Elsewhere, the demon eyeballs are quietly stalking a lone demon slayer as he walks through the streets. The eyes turn out to be Nakime's, who are spying on the whereabouts of the demon slayers, while she and Muzan stay hidden inside the infinity castle. She states that she has determined the location of about 60% of all of the demon slayers, but she has still absolutely no idea about the location of the girl who conquered the sun. She reports her findings to Muzan, who praises her growth, and quietly states that he will soon find both Nezuko and Ubiyashiki. According to what Genya taught Tanjiro, repetitive action is a technique that opens all five senses. Genya may not be able to use breaths, but he can achieve total concentration another way, which is through these repetitive actions. When Gyome and Genya use it, they remember their anger and painful memories that makes their heart rate and temperature go up. The signs were pointing to the possibility that this might be the same as Tanjiro's mark coming out, but Gyome and Genya had no marks, so they cocked their heads in confusion. 
By doing these repetitive actions, you can focus on any given movement, and Tanjiro thought how it would be nice if he could learn how to maintain his darkened mark forever. His repetitive actions were remembering all of the faces of his loved ones, then recalling Rengoku's words, keep your heart burning, and with that, he was able to raise his focus to its maximum limits. Tanjiro couldn't do it at the very beginning, but he was able to use all the strength that he had by doing these repetitive actions. As he did them again and again, his body began to remember the way to bring out that power through these specific set of actions. Eventually, he was able to push the boulder, slowly but surely. Surprised by Tanjiro's sudden growth, Inosuke immediately jumps into action, and by thinking about the rock as tempura, he was able to push it some distance. As Zenitsu looks in dismay at how he is the only one remaining to move the boulder, suddenly a sparrow appears next to him, chirping and holding a letter. Tanjiro was able to move his boulder across one cho, finishing the rock Hashira's training, but was left completely dehydrated by this task. As he writhes in pain on the ground, Kiyomi walks up and pours water over Tanjiro. He then accepts him as a swordsman, recalling Tanjiro's actions from the swordsmith village when he prioritized the villagers over his younger sister's life during the crisis. Tanjiro, however, did not accept this praise as Nezuko was the one who had made that decision and not him. Upon hearing this, Kiyome noted how different Tanjiro is as to him. Children are pure and naive, weak, quick to lie, completely fine with cruelty and selfish little things. Kiyome then begins to tell Tanjiro his story about how he raised some kids who had no family in a temple before he became a demon slayer. Their affinity and having no blood connections helped them bond together very well and he raised them like his own family. Kiyome wanted to keep life that way forever. But then one night, a kid disobeyed the temple's rules and didn't come back after sunset, and sadly ran into a demon. In order to save his own skin, the boy told the demon the location and the number of people inside the temple. He also, so that the demon made it past the temple's defenses, put out all of the wisteria incense that Gyome had burning as protection and invited the demon inside the temple, which resulted in four kids dying immediately as they got sliced in half. Yume tried to protect the other four, but they did not listen to him, so they tried to run and sadly died. Only Sayo, the youngest, listened to him and hid behind him. In order to protect Sayo, Kyome fought and punched the demon's head again and again until the sun came up. He was able to protect Sayo, but when people came to help, Sayo was only four years old at that time and got confused and labelled Kyome as a murderer and a monster who had killed all of the children. As a result, Yome was imprisoned and charged with murder. If Kagaya had not intervened, he would have been executed, and ever since, he had come to harbour deep doubts and suspicions that no matter how virtuous you are, once you get pushed into a corner, your true nature will come out. But Tanjiro never ran, he always stayed honest and never lied. Seeing that Tanjiro indeed is a special child, Yome promised him to help so that Tanjiro would not make a wrong turn in his life. After this, he then told Tanjiro that he had officially finished his training with the Stone Hashira. Later on, while eating together, Genya recalls to Tanjiro how Gyome made him his disciple despite the fact that he doesn't have the talent to be an apprentice and guessed that he was actually eating demons as a way to get stronger. Gyome introduced Genya to Shinobu for her to check up on his conditions, but every time he sees her, she puts on a disgusted face and scolds Genya. Tanjiro, however, comments that Shinobu was just worried about Genya's body and invited him to go see Giyu together to talk about his brother once they are done eating, but Genya declines as he is still not finished with the Rock Hashira's training, saying that he was still yet to move the boulder one cho. While on his way to Giyu, Tanjiro saw Zenitsu on top of his boulder and asked if he would be okay since they have not talked for a while, which worried him. Zenitsu tells Tanjiro that he has simply achieved clarity about what he should do, what he must do. Tanjiro tries to pull more information out of Zenitsu, but all he manages to get was that he must do what he must do. Still, before leaving, Zenitsu ends up slightly caving in and thanks him, telling Tanjiro that he is truly a nice guy. But standing there with the most determined look of his life, he reiterates that there is something that he absolutely must do. Tanjiro then visits Giyu's place and upon his arrival, he saw Giyu and Sanimi fighting with wooden swords on hand. Their movements are so fast, but he notes that he can follow their movements. 
The battle ended with both Giyu and Sanemi's swords broken after a clash of breathing techniques as Sanemi suggested that they continue their fight with their fists. Suddenly Tanjiro then interrupted them and suggested that they just share some ohagi, which pissed off Sanemi even more given that him and Tanjiro are not supposed to get near each other. After the group awkwardly have somewhat of a passive aggressive conversation, Sanemi storms off after and Giyu notes that every Hashira also takes part in each other's training. He also plans to sneak some ohagi into a bag to give to Sanemi in order to try and get along with him. While Sanemi is walking angrily away from Giyu's place, he notices something following him nearby in the foliage and instantly snatches it from the ground, then proceeds to crush it in his fingers. As it falls from his hand, a confused Sanemi wonders what it could possibly be. Elsewhere, at the exact same time, the meeting of generations is about to take place. Under the starry moonlit night, Kagaya Yubashiki welcomes Muzan Kibijutsu to his household as their first ever meeting commences. As the demon Muzan slowly closes in on the bedridden Ubiyashiki, he tells him that he looks in an unsightly condition before. Well, that officially brings us to the very end of the one and only Hashira training arc of Demon Slayer. If you guys have enjoyed the video, then make sure you do hit that subscribe button and also be sure to leave a like on the video as well, as it really does help out with that algorithm and pushes my stuff to a bunch of new amazing people. So obviously this is like the third part of my entire Demon Slayer story explained so far, uh, or explained in general. Um, the next one is going to be on the entire Infinity Castle part of the final arc. I'm not sure if I'm going to put the final arc in three parts yet, but I know that I'll most likely have the Affinity arc as like one whole video itself, or the Affinity Castle arc, whatever you like to call it. Um, this story so far has been absolutely amazing and I've enjoyed every single part of it. The training arc was a nice little break in between all of the action that we have been having recently. So, you know, I've really enjoyed just seeing a lot of the, uh, the character building that we have got throughout this. I really want to know what's going on with Zenitsu, obviously, because this is like still a, uh, blind, like, read through, I guess, for me. I don't know what is going to happen in this Infinity, uh, Castle arc that is coming up next. So I can't wait to actually get into that and read it, you know, uh, in the up and coming chapters, or I can't wait to actually get into that and read that in the uh, up and coming you know like chapters that are uh, after this one in the final arc but yeah as I said before if you are new around here make sure you hit that subscribe button and also be sure to hit that like as it really helps out with the algorithm and pushes my stuff to a bunch of new amazing people and also make sure you go down below and check out raid which you you know like you can get through my link like I said earlier in the video as honestly it helps out more than you can like imagine sponsoring these kind of videos it means that I can put more time into them and uh like if you can support them they can help support me so make sure you go and check them out it is free so just go and do it boys but anyway for now it's been your professional degenerate Diavolo and I will see you all in a bit. Bye.